my vision is we become one of the world's leading sources of skin and scalp data. And that's a really powerful proposition. We can leverage that data as we are doing today uh, through consumer insights to improve our existing products and services, but we can monetize that data in many other ways. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business, and today is no exception. Today with us in the studio is Andrew Stanlick, and he is the, uh, the CEO and president of the Beauty Health Company. Uh, he's also a very good friend of mine, full disclosure. Uh, welcome, Andrew. Thanks for coming and joining us. Grant, thank you for having me on the podcast. It's something I've been looking forward to. And we've uh, talked about it for over a year. Exactly. So it's really great to be here. Thank you. I love it. I love it. So I always like to start to get to know my guests. You have a distinctive accent, so this is going to be really fun. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Great question. Well, you can tell by my accent I was born in the UK, but I consider myself a, a truly global citizen. I've lived in eight, nine countries across four continents, including seven years in Asia. Uh, but home, you know, if we go back to the start, I grew up in rural southwest England on the River Dart. Uh, had a really fabulous, very sheltered childhood, uh -huh. shooting, fishing, boating. And I was one of four with three older sisters. Um, so that was a... So you were the baby and the boy? Exactly. Oh, man. You had three older sisters. I bet you were spoiled right. Absolutely. Four mothers. So, uh, no, it was a really uh, great experience uh, growing up. And I think in some way... Uh, growing up with uh, four women in the house, I shaped, you know, the career trajectory which I ultimately took. Absolutely. Where did you go to college or university? As you, I finished my master's degree in economics at Cambridge University. Interesting. Uh, and you know, back then I, there was two routes. There was the the, the investment banking route, uh, all really into marketing. And you know, I chose the marketing and beauty route, and I'm I'm so happy I did. I've been blessed to have a really interesting and varied career. I bet so. What was your first job out of university? Well, my first job before university, I used to work on a, a fishing boat. Uh, me too. Yeah. Uh, it was just as a great experience. I grew up in a, in a fishing community. Uh -huh. uh, and um, it, it taught me a lot of things, actually. But I think it really gave me this uh, you know, opportunity to work with people from all different backgrounds. Uh, and I think it was a great skill in life, which I've always taken through. I enjoy meeting and working with people. Uh, and I used that opportunity to fund myself through university. Uh -huh. And then out of college, uh, I was really blessed to um, get an opportunity to work for Unilever. And that's just such a wonderful uh, school of learning and marketing. Uh, and after you know, four years there, I had the great opportunity to go and work for L'Oreal. And I spent ultimately 13 years working for L'Oreal all over the world. And they really are the very best school of, of beauty. And it was a great opportunity to work across different divisions, uh, consumer products division, the mass division, luxury products and skincare, of course, professional skincare, and also uh, their dermatology skincare um, division. So wonderful experiences. And you know, obviously I had the opportunity to live in many different countries, including you know, Russia, Poland, the UK, as well as Southeast Asia. Wow. And that was for 13 years? Yeah. What an experience that must have been. I bet you learned a ton. Yeah, absolutely. They really are the very best school of, of beauty uh, and all things marketing. So I had a, a really wonderful experience. Uh, and and yeah, during that time living in Asia, I wanted to stay longer. And I wanted to get a new opportunity and learn at this time direct to consumer and retail. So then I had uh, a five-year stint working for Coach, the handbag and accessories company. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, first running their business in Southeast Asia. Uh, and, uh, you know, Pacific, and then running their EMEA business. And I also took a lot of great experiences there. You know, I learned a lot about DTC and e-commerce, as well as retail and all skills which really helped me later on in my career. But Grant, I really missed the beauty industry. And um, after five years with Coach, I had the opportunity to uh, work for Coty. Uh -huh. uh, again, a, a wonderful a multinational beauty company. And um, first of all, started in running a Europe region out of uh, Geneva, and then very quickly moved to the US to run the Americas business. 
uh, really for the last five years, which is a great experience. And also during that time, Cody acquired uh, Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian's uh, beauty business Mm -hmm. in a joint venture. And I was very fortunate to be the CEO of Kylie Jenner's business and uh, helped Kim uh, Kardashian run her beauty business. So it was a really wonderful experience and I learned a lot during that period. And how long were you in that role? Um, Overall, four and a half years. Yeah. Okay. And then was the next role uh, Brent Sanders giving you a call? (laughs) Yes. I mean, I feel that all of the experiences I've had with this wonderful career and these fabulous companies and international has really led me to this point at Beauty Health. Um, So when Brent approached me in Q4, I think it was 2021, I was um, really intrigued. And truth be told, I'd never heard of hydrofacial. I was going to ask you if you ever had one. And then I asked my my wife and, of course, three sisters who are very interested in all things beauty and aesthetics, and they'd never heard of hydrofacial. So are they in the UK, your three sisters? They are in the UK. Okay. They have lived internationally, but now they've gravitated back to the UK. Uh-huh. Uh, and so I was intrigued to find out more. So Grant, I, Brent arranged for me to trial a, a trial hydrofacial, and you really have to get it to get it as soon as I had it and had this wonderful, non-invasive, confidence-building experience in you know, three steps, 30 minutes. I left the office with uh, you know, wonderful, glowing skin. But uh, Best skin of your life. Best skin of my life. But <laughs> I th- more importantly, I think an inner glow of confidence and a spring in my step. And I, I think it was something that I really wanted to be part of. And you know, Brent is just such a fantastic leader and guy. And honestly, we, we've become good friends. That it, it was something I was very happy to have the opportunity to joined Beauty Health just over a year ago, and I couldn't be happier uh, leading the company. So since you took the helm in the reins of Beauty Health and thus Hydrofacial, you've made a number of changes. Uh, Can you elaborate on some of the things you've done in one year? That's amazing to me. I thought it was a couple of years. Yes. No, we've achieved. Feels like it. I'm really proud of what the team and I have achieved. You should be. Yeah. Yeah. Share that with our yeah. guests, please. Absolutely. I mean, first of all, coming in, I, I took some steps to fortify the team, and I you know, really brought in some really great people to complement the strong team we already had. Uh, it was really happy to bring in Brad Hauser, who you know really well. He's right Brad. on the program. Exactly. And, of course, we have Dr. Juala. Connick, who's, our who's been on the program. The only guest that ever brought mocktails, did you know she'd mix mocktails right there and gave them to me during the interview? Oh, a reminder of that to do that in the office. Um, yeah, and I'm, you know, we've brought in some really, you know, top talent, uh, really, you know, Maria Machiowski leads our marketing team. And I think, you know, we've, we've really set up the team for success in my first year. But moreover than that, we launched uh, our biggest innovation uh, to date, which was Hydrofacial Syndeo, which is our fully connected next generation device. It really is a leap forward in technology in this space. Uh, we launched that last March. It's been a tremendous success, Grant. Um, yeah, the rollout, um, you know, we achieved more sales and system placements than we you know, would have ever, ever dreamed of. Uh, and also, it's really helped us drive our consumable revenue sales. So that really contributed to, a, you know, we grew last year despite the macroeconomic backdrop across the world and, you know, the, the war on the Ukraine and Russia and the lockdown in China. Our business grew 46% last year. You know, year over year? Year over year. 366 million. You know, the business has doubled really in the last two years. Uh, and moreover, we delivered adjusted EBITDA profit of you know 47 million so you know it's an incredible journey which the company's been on in the last couple of years but at the heart of it has been the launch of of Sindeo and it's just that you know really Brent myself and the board's vision of beauty health is that we become you know the world's leading beauty health platform company we have hydrofacial we have Keraviv as another acquisition skin stylist we're going to talk about uh, shortly. But we envisage to create a interconnected group of brands, all with a back end of one shared technology platform and data. Mm-hmm. And you know that will become very powerful for us. My vision is we'll become one of the world's leading sources of skin and scalp data. And that's a really powerful proposition. We can leverage that data as we are doing today uh, through consumer insights to improve our existing products and services 
but we can monetize that data in many other ways. So that is the vision. But the first step, of course, is globalizing uh, Sindeo, uh, you know, the new hydrofacial device. Could you tell us a little bit more about Sindeo as it, as it relates to the original hydrofacial? Absolutely. Yeah. What are the key differences? Absolutely. I mean, Roger and, and Bill are founders, and I'm, I'm very close to them. You know, innovation is really at the core of the DNA of the company, which mm -hmm. they founded. And, um, you know, Sindeo, we've just taken that inspiration from the original hydrofacial device and just, you know, m moved it from an analog device to a next generation fully connected device. So it's got a number of enhancements. First, you know, just from a functional for the for the consumer, the con the experience for the consumer is 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 better in terms of the delivery system, in terms of the consistency we give. Uh, for the provider, the you know the machine is beautiful. It enables them to capture all the data on the consumer, build a profile to ensure they get the you know the the same service time after time. Also, it's gestureless. So these days, post COVID, more and more, you know, people are concerned about hygiene. So you can operate the machine without actually touching it you, by waving and doing gestures, which you know, many consumers really respond well to. Uh, and of course, there's, there's many other features uh, which you know which the data enables to unlock in terms of building up profiles on consumers and tailor making and personalizing the hydrofacial service to their specific skin type through different boosters and different serums which we're able to offer. Um, so it's been a huge success. And of course, for us, it, it moves us from an analog business where we really didn't know once we sold it to a provider what was selling out and not selling. Mm -hmm. And of course, now with Sindeo, we're fully connected to every device uh, around the world. So we know how many times it turned, what service was given, uh, what boosters were used. And of course, then also we're capturing the data on the consumer. And also on different providers, we were able to benchmark providers, you know, in a specific channels, which providers do certain services better than others, who do we need to train, uh, what, who can we learn from. It's a multitude of factors how we can leverage that data. If I go to a different office for a hydrofacial because I'm on holiday, can they pull up my data? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, really the first step you'd come into a provider, uh, they diagnose your skin and then provide prescribe you what I get hydrofacials a lot of hydrofacial you'll have if you download the app and we will launch a new one this summer even more improved you have your own QR code and on that QR code uh, is your profile uh, with details about you your skin type and what boosters you have to give you the optimum um, personalization from the hydrofacial and with that wherever you go in the world you know, to have a hydrofacial uh, be it uh, you know in your local dermatologist or maybe on the way to work at the Equinox gym, or if you're at the Four Seasons in Hong Kong, you know, you'll just scan your barcode from the app and it has your profile ready to go. So you have that very, very consistent service. It's, it's extremely powerful and consumers and providers really enjoy it. I bet for consistency and so forth. I know when I haven't had a hydrofacial for a while, I, I said I'm an addict to them and I look for them and I didn't know what you just told me. I did not know the because I'm asked, what serums do you use, and 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 so forth. Now it seems like I just flash my QR code. Absolutely. So I'll will I have the QR code on my phone? Yes, you If you download the app, you could do it today. Although we're we're, we're in the middle of enhancing it, uh, which will launch that at the end of H1 of 2023. Um, yeah, but you download, create your profile. You'll have a QR code. We scan it, and then with Sindeo, we we're ready to go. So we have Sindeo, and I'm a big fan of it. Now, you mentioned Caraviv. Yeah. Could you tell everybody what Caraviv is? I certainly know what it is. Absolutely. Describe Caraviv, please. Yeah. I mean, I think hydrofacial is the best kept secret in beauty, but Caraviv is another one. I think we all know if we take a step back that the, the hair and scalp market is a $100 billion opportunity globally, and it's growing. And with Caraviv, uh, we have an outstanding formula with clinical results, as we do on all of our hydrofacial products. Um, and, you know, just as with the hydrofacial device, it cleans your pores, to, you know, the three steps, the hydrofacial, the cleaning, the extraction, and the hydration. Right. Caraviv does the same with your hair follicle. Right. So we use the same hydrofacial system. So providers love it. One system, multiple uses and revenue streams. So it's really great for our providers. And we obviously clean your scalp, extract, and then infuse it with a serum 
a file, a booster of Keraviv, and then we give you a, a leave-in conditioner, leave-in to take home, which over, you know which you use over a three-month period. We recommend, and we have studies to show it delivers thinner, thicker, fuller hair. Uh, and you know we launched it just before the lockdown uh, of COVID lockdown in March 2020. Uh, where it performs today, it does extremely well. But I believe it could be as big, if not bigger, actually, than hydrofacial. Uh, and, um, you know, I think we also need to consider different channels of distribution where we could play with Caraviv. So it's a hugely exciting opportunity. Absolutely. Okay. So hydrofacial, Caraviv, and you mentioned something else. Yeah. So we announced the acquisition of Skin Stylus. It's a micro needling device cleared by the FDA on indications for the abdomen. Uh, and it's a really fabulous device, Grant. I can't wait to show so is it. Is it different than micro needling? It, well, it's, it's, it is a, it is a, it's a micro needling device. Okay. Uh, but we feel, having studied very carefully the market, that this one is new, better, and different than anything else on the market in terms of the functionality, in terms of the use of the provider experience. The, even the ergonomics is much easier for the provider to use than other leading pens on the market. And the cartridges, and just like hydrofacial, it's a recurring revenue stream. You know, there's a consumable. Yeah, there's a consumable. Is it for the body only or body and face? Today we have FDA clearance for uh, the abdomen, the body. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we will be working with Dr. Joala Karnik to do clinical studies to seek approval for other indications. And of course, to, launch, to launch internationally. But Microneedling was something where Brent and I and all the team really wanted to get into. It is the most complimentary service for our providers for hydrofacial. You know, when we, you know, I spend most of my weeks meeting and engaging with our providers, the hydrofacial nation, as you know, we call them. Right. When I meet providers, I think what they have been telling me is that microneedling is the most complimentary service. And many of them prescribe a hydrofacial. Uh, to ensure the skin is clean and its most optimum condition before they do microneedling. So it's very complimentary. It, um, we've, it also leverages exactly the same call point where we, you know, we call today with our reps. And the esthetician in most states is the person in the medical channel who's delivering the microneedling service. So we're very excited. It's our first step really in our strategy to build out the beauty health platform. And we have this strategy of, of build and buy build, of course, with our existing growth of hydrofacial globally. Uh -huh. And, and Graham, we have so much white spur ahead of us. Uh, yes. Even in the US, we're just beginning the journey. Uh, and then, of course, buy with, you know, we're very well capitalized to buy other products to plug into our platform. And Skin Stylus, of course, is the first one. So we're very excited about that acquisition. So it, it's microneedling. Does it infuse a serum also? No, just the pure microneedling, and then you can put something topically or not. Correct. Yes. Okay. So it's uh, it's microneedling, and it's a recurring revenue stream. You have the device uh, in that model of the razor razor blade. You know uh -huh. the device is the razor, and the recurring revenue stream is the array of needles of different depths. Okay, that's use it and, and discard it. Yeah, the one loose, and it's it's an emerging technology. It's just doing today just a few million dollars growing very fast, but it's all very profitable and accretive to our margin for Beauty Health. So we really feel good about this acquisition. And it sounds complimentary to the hydrofacial experience. Extremely complimentary. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else is on the horizon? Uh, can you tell us any other acquisitions or build outs you're doing? I mean, or is it deep, dark secret? Yeah. I think, I think the key priority, if we, we talk about our strategy of, you know, build and buy, of course, Launching Sindeo globally is the number one priority for the company. Okay. Uh, and of course, thereafter, expanding Caraviv, we really believe that's going to be a really strong second pillar for our company. And thirdly, of course, uh, is really maximizing the recent acquisition of Skin Stylist. Going forward, though, uh, in terms of our acquisition strategy, yes, we, we're actively looking at different targets all the time. We have quite a strict criteria. Uh, it's something Brent and I work very closely on, but we want something which is, you know, a creative top and bottom line. Okay. It needs to be very complementary to our existing call point. Okay. So we can add immediate leverage. And if our rep sales representatives are calling on an office, you know, they have hydrofacial today, Caraviv, and now skin stylus. What else can we put in their 
bag. Bag. Yeah, and that is what we're focused on. And it needs to have a high net promoter score, just like Hydrofacial has one of the highest net promoter scores in the aesthetics industry. We want something which is not a fad and what consumers and providers will respond well to. And uh, yeah, we've been actively looking at targets. I think what we found is whilst valuations in the public markets have come down quite significantly in the last 18 months, the private markets are a little slow to follow. So we continue to, to look, but always as a public company, we want to make sure that we are getting the greatest value for our shareholders. So we remain prudent and very diligent in our choices. Always. Now, in the microneedling device, remind me the name of it again. Skin stylus. Skin stylus. Is that anything that a consumer could take home and do on themselves? No. Is that only in the medical facility? Only in the medical facility. Okay. And is that by law or by your own policy? By or law, yes. By this law. is an FDA uh, medical device too. And today, just to be, as I said, it's just for approval indication of the abdomen scars. We would apply for other indications, but it needs to be administered uh, in you know FDA approved um, offices. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, outside the United States, and I've noticed uh, uh, that your growth has been phenomenal. Just in general, you talked about the increase in, in sales and so forth. What, could you let the crowd know, what countries are you in besides the U.S.? Yeah, we're in 17 countries, including the U.S., so 16 international markets, which make up about 85% of the world's beauty and aesthetics markets. So we're in all the big ones, of course, in Europe, the U.K., Germany, France, Spain, of course, you know, China, Japan, Korea, Australia, uh, as well as just to mention a few uh, overseas. So very exciting. And as you saw from our last earnings call, we had tremendous growth last year. And that was before Sindare. And you know, they're particularly proud of our growth in Europe. We grew 46% and we were hit very hard, like many companies last year in Europe with, you know, the sadly the war in the Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost significant business there. The currency headwinds were very tough to absorb as well, which we did. And the economic situation, although it has been improving, was quite tough in, in EMEA last year, but we still grew 46% year over year. Uh, likewise, in, in Asia as well, slightly slower growth in Asia was still growing you know, double digit. Um, but of course, China was locked down for us for, uh, for much of last year, and it's a significant part of our Asia Pacific business. So we're very excited now with um, you know China beginning to open up. We see that as a real key market for us in the future. We really do have the gold standard uh, of um, you know the device market with hydrofacial in China, and excited to you know um, really grow there. And you've also started well, not started, but you continued with and really promoted installations in in um, spas and hotels, as you just mentioned, Four Seasons and luxury brands all around the world, I've noticed, uh, not just, if you will, doctor's offices or medispas. I mean, Is that th correct? That's a great point. I think one of the reasons I was so excited to join this company is that the unique partner strategy it has. I mean, we work with everyone, indeed, even some of our competitors. We've created this unique ecosystem and omni-channel business model that we have, you know, 60% of our business is in the medical channel. Non-medical channel is 40%, and both channels are growing very fast. But non-medical channels, of course, non-medical spas, hotels, gyms, cruise ships, <laughs> uh, you know, many different channels where we grow. And we're able to differentiate our, our products by channel. Some of our products are only available, of course, in the physician office, particularly some of the chemical pills, et cetera, more invasive. Um, but so a truly omni-channel business model, and very proud of our retail presence. We're in 550 Sephoras across the US and Canada. We're in 10 Alters, 10 Nordstroms. We've grown internationally last year with the launch of John Lewis in the UK and Galilee Lafayette in France. So a truly omni-channel business, which is very unique in the beauty and aesthetics market. Moreover, only really beauty, health, and hydrofacial with the ecosystem we've created we get to work with all these wonderful skincare brands and partners. So, mm. you know, from the medical side, we work with you know, Dr. Paul Nassif, Murad, Elastin, Epicutis. But then, you know, on other sides, we work with premium beauty brands such as Omoravitsa, or, you know, we announced the Dior partnership just two weeks ago, as well as celebrities such as Jennifer Lopez. And that's been a huge success, the Jennifer Lopez uh, booster, which we launched last fall. 
Fantastic. Well, I noticed in your jacket there you brought a crystal ball today. Could you pull it out, look into it, and tell me what we're going to look at in one, three, and five years in this beauty business? You've been it your whole life, your whole professional career. You've been in the beauty business. And after all, this is the technology of beauty. So looking at that crystal ball, what are we going to see in a year, in three years, in five years, either for you and your company or just in general out there? Tell me what you see. Well, oh, to have a crystal ball. <laughs> I saw you bring it in. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, look, in, in my personal opinion, I think the next five to 10 years are going to be incredibly uh, dynamic, but also I think transformative for beauty and aesthetics. And it's probably three or four factors in my point of view driving this. I think one of the key drivers we're seeing at the moment, we're calling it the medicalization of, of beauty. I think more and more consumers are seeking out products which have clinical um, data-based efficacy. I think I think fewer are the days now ahead where consumers are willing to shell out hundreds of dollars on skincare, et cetera, without that really clinical uh, claims underpinning. I think this could be a real Kodak moment for traditional beauty companies uh, where consumers are looking for you know, products and services like Hydrofacial, which deliver that skincare, deliver that efficacy, which are non-invasive. And I think if you look at the broader aesthetics market, you know, the affordability now of, of neurotoxins, of Hydrofacial, of clinical skincare, of lasers, products which deliver immediate results and are becoming very affordable. I think that medicalization of, of beauty is a, is a key driver and will be really transformative. I think the second key driver we see is this destigmatization of, of beauty and aesthetics. I mean, it feels like wherever I go around the world, dinner party and cocktail conversation is dominated by people talking about their tweakments, something which was taboo not many years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and it's bringing um, you know, younger people into category. It's bringing more men into mm -hmm. the category. Um, so again, I think that's going to fuel significant growth and innovation. I think thirdly as well, you know, post-COVID, it's really transformed how consumers view health and wellness. I think, you know, it's really changed. It's not just about looking good, it's feeling good. It's a broader definition, including mental health, wellness. I think, again, this is going to fuel innovation and growth in these categories in the, in the, in the coming years. And I think finally, perhaps most importantly, it's just fueling a, a broader definition of beauty. I think when I started my career, you know, 25, 30 years ago now, beauty was very much a European aesthetic, a uh, very one size fits all cookie cutter approach. I think now consumers and companies are embracing, you know, a much broader definition of beauty. Uh, and I think that again, that's fueling the growth of different brands, different services, I think, again, Beauty Health is really well positioned to capture that growth. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us here today and educating us and giving us a look into the future. Uh, I've been a loyal uh, consumer of Hydrofacial for many, many years, and I look and care of you, and look forward to uh, uh, more growth on the part of the Beauty Health Company and, and, and working with you and using your products. My consumers, my patients love it. And as you know, we also have them at Orange Twist, which is uh, offices that have hydrofacial also, which is the mainstay of our treatments. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me and thank you for your partnership. It's uh, been great to be on. Yes, absolutely. And thank you all for joining us today on this episode of The Technology of Beauty. We'll see you every Tuesday. See you next week.